Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up? Winning Cures Everything college football recap for week number seven. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Hopefully everybody's having a good Sunday morning. We are uh, we are recording this while we're watching the NFL London game, which uh, is already incredibly entertaining. Just, what, an hour into this thing? We've got two Christian McCaffrey touchdowns. The the Bucks have already scored. I mean, we're 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 rolling in London. Like that sometimes these things get started kind of slow, but not today. Not today. Chris, we had a ton of crap happen yesterday. Yeah, a lot of football in college football. Massive slate, humongous games. Most of them turned out the way that you would expect. It was a little bit chalky, but they were all entertaining. I mean, a ton of one-score games. You had a, a big-time team go down. Uh, before we get into that, of course, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six, count them, six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. They sponsor the show. They bring you the uh, the gifts and whatnot for the, uh, the pick-em giveaways. So they uh they always treat us well. They will treat you well. Go see our friends in the Delta, of course, tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Facebook, Twitter, podcasts, videos, previews, picks, etc. Our pick 'em contest. Everything else is over there. Winningcureseverything.com. Uh go find out more information on what we do, what we are doing, and how much fun we're having because this has been one hell of a season. It uh it has not gone our way gambling wise, I will tell you that. <laughs> so, uh, Chris and I are both dying for those that that don't, you know, if you're not watching, if you're only listening on the podcast, we are uh we are struggling. Yes, the, the weather has yep. changed. Definitely playing hurt. <laughs> that's a, that's a good way of putting it. We are uh, we are playing injured right now. We uh, if our voices sound different, that would be why, because man, I, I've not been able to breathe. Uh, basically, since uh, last Tuesday when we did the show, um, it, it's it, and it's I, I don't it. God forbid I complain about the fact that it is now sixty degrees outside. But no, uh, it feels great outside. I'm not blaming this on yeah. the weather. It just happens, man. I just yeah. yeah you and, know, I felt great all week. Um, this all hit bad last night. You know, I went to bed about midnight, eleven thirty. Woke up at three a.m. this morning. Can't breathe out my nose. My whole face just hurts. So. Yeah. Yeah, but that's my wife, the good wife, the the, the long suffering wife, has uh, gone across state lines into Tennessee to give me that good suit fed <laughs> that the, uh, the, the 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 meth mouth people use. The good stuff. This up. The good stuff that actually works. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It should be here any minute. So I, my uh, my drug of choice when it gets to be like this is uh, the Mucinex DM and my wife introduced me to it. And that thing, it works for me. Now it doesn't work for everybody. I want the, I want the illegal stuff. (laughs) You gotta, you gotta give your ID, a blood sample, maybe a sperm sample, naming rights to your third child, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, Let's, uh, let's go ahead and fire into this thing. We had a, we had a major upset yesterday. South Carolina 20, Georgia 17. This was in Athens, and this was not a fluke. It was in double overtime. Um, the way that this goes down, South Carolina leads this thing 17-10 to 10 at the half, and neither team does anything with the football. Uh, Georgia, you know, with fumbles and interceptions, et cetera, they finally, finally score a touchdown to tie it with a minute 48 left. South Carolina misses a 57-yard field goal with 40 seconds left in the game. Georgia can't do anything with the ball at that point because, I mean, they got the ball back at uh, the South Carolina 38. And just, yeah. I mean, it it was just ridiculous. Um, Georgia throws an interception in overtime. And from fourth fourth of the game to the same guy. third, Third of the game. Third of the game. He had three, yeah, he had three picks, and then there was a fumble. Oh, the fumble. That was yeah. the other one. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, so he throws a pick in the first overtime. 
South Carolina misses a field goal. Second overtime, South Carolina hits a field goal. And Rodrigo Blankenship, who had not missed all season, hits or uh, misses a 42-yard field goal wide left. And I... Fo- football karma. Football karma. Ball don't lie. That's, that's is exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, the, to tie the game, to tie the game on fourth down in regulation, there is a super ticky-tack hold where the DB grabs the towel of the receiver and tugs it just a touch, just a touch, and from airmails the ball out of the end zone. So completely uncatchable, not even close. They call that holding, which is automatic first down, puts them on like the four-yard line. No question they're going to score with with four plays to, to get a touchdown to tie the game. No question at all that, that a team that good, that strong in Georgia is not going to take advantage of that. And complete chicanery, complete just screwery of trying to give South Carolina the game. The absolute karma gods came back and got. Yeah, no, you're you're a. It's the right, right thing to happen too. By the way, this this was not fluky. Uh, no, Georgia, they they beat South Carolina. I mean, they beat Georgia. Up. Yeah. Uh, well, now here's the deal. Georgia had 468 total yards to only 297 for South Carolina, uh, but South Carolina. They held Georgia to only 4.0 yards per carry rushing. Now, Georgia still had 173 yards rushing, but the fact that they were able to slow down the running game made it where Jake Fromm had to throw the football 51 times. That's right. And and when you have to throw the ball 51 times, you're more susceptible to those interceptions. And and props to, uh, what's the kid's name that got all the interceptions? Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, Mukuamu? I think it's uh, is Israel Mukuamu. Yeah, I'm going to say there's no way I'm pronouncing his last name without making it sound all horrible and whatever. True sophomore. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that kid, not just the three turnovers all to the same guy. He took them all away. But he shut down his side of the field. Yeah. I mean, that kid, that kid completely took a dominant receiver out of the game the entire game. Yeah. He was he was something else. Uh, Helensky looked great up until he got knocked out of the game in the third quarter. Uh, there's something about Georgia playing against backup quarterbacks, man. Like, I don't know what it is. It, it, that's a that's a very cliche thing to say. It's a very broad this is a, no, this, a This is a Kirby Smart problem, and I've been saying it since he's been there. <clears throat> that guy can recruit. He's got talent out the yin-yang. Nobody's going to argue with that. Nobody's going to argue the fact that he's not a good coach and whatever. But they win because they have talent. Yeah. But when the game kicks off and you don't get any more preparation time, and it is man on man, and that thing when he's out front, he can beat the hell out of anybody. Oh yeah. But if it gets tight, that guy is going to poop all over himself. He is going to screw up everything in the tight quarters of every football game he's ever been in. Even the ones they win, they win ugly and they win bad because he just completely bumbles everything. He makes bad decisions. He makes bad, and he's super predictable too. Yeah. Like, I just don't get it. You got more talent than maybe anybody in the country outside of Alabama and Clemson. And you look like crap over and over and over again. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. So when we talked in our 468 chat, yards, sorry, Gary, 468 total yards for 17 points. Yeah. I mean, you, you count all the yards you want. You know what I take to the bank? I take points to the bank. Oh yeah. Well, it's so, don't so, take yards to the bank. Yards don't beat anybody. What we talked about yesterday in our little group chat uh, with the with the Big Ten guys, the Northwestern yeah. guys, I talked about how, and, and of course, they didn't appreciate this because they're Northwestern fans. So when I bring right. up that their offensive approach is ancient and just out of date, Kirby Smart is using the early 2010 Alabama, early 2010s uh, teens, whatever, Alabama offensive approach, which is the run first, uh, you know, it don't spread the field, don't you know, like you just it's very old ball control kind of stuff. Uh, Georgia He's held the football got talent. Yes, uh, Georgia receiver. held the football for thirty seven minutes in this game. That is ridiculous. Like they they had all of the different things in this game and could not capitalize because of that. And I, I got to tell you, man, I. It doesn't shock me uh, because, you know, Kirby looks at this as, hey, we won, you know, three national championships at Alabama playing this way. But 
football is just a terrible changed. philosophy. Yeah. Yes, the game evolves, man. The, hey, this the game of college football is so different right now as opposed to four or five years ago. Yes, I don't even know if I recognize it anymore. <laughs> like, well, no, I recognize it, but it's cha- it's just changed. It has. Yeah, it, it just it's has. And even different. the teams that still run the football and play good defense understand we have to run the football and equate to thirty five and forty points. Yeah. I mean, Wisconsin does nothing but run the football. Now they didn't yesterday. We'll get into that game eventually. But but they're still a team that dominates by running the ball. And and but they still acknowledge the fact that you got to score thirty five, you got to score forty. It's just a different game. Oh yeah, it's a low scoring different. game is played in the twenties. Now that's that's a twenty eight point game. That's a low scoring game. No, you're you're a hundred percent right about that. Uh, let's let's move on. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about something that's a little bit different. At, at least as far as the way that the game went, LSU wins forty two to twenty eight over Florida down in the Bayou. Uh, man, look. LSU only had four third downs. Did you realize that? Yep. Nope. I, I knew all the stats, baby. One out of Got four on third down. They had 511 total yards, only had the ball for 21 minutes in this ball game. Florida dominated time of possession. They uh, Florida got 457 yards from Kyle Trask in that offense. It was a brilliant game plan by Dan Mullen. Uh, they had their two best defensive players out of the game, um, you, you thought that maybe they were going to get back the uh, the big-time defensive end. He went for, what, two plays and had a high ankle sprain, couldn't go anymore. Uh, they just, it, look, this is what happens when you play big-time teams back-to-back-to-back, you know, all that kind of mess. Now, I, th- I now, think that guy played most of the first quarter. I, I think he played he a play? lot. No, he may have played, like played the first, a lot of the first half because it wasn't until the second half till they announced he's officially not coming back. He, he went out, I think, maybe the second drive is when he went out, because I remember Maybe. them talking about it. Well, the, the second drive only lasts two, two plays. That's well, I'm talking, yeah. It, maybe maybe so. Maybe it was the third one. I don't know. So, I mean, if he went Either out way. in the second drive, it was, it was a quick early. pass, and it was a quick run, and it was over. So, It was early, though. Either way. Um, yeah, passing? Like, how, how crazy is this? We have gotten so used to LSU, like, throwing the football all over the field. Florida had more passing yards. Had 311 to 293. LSU, we had not seen this rushing attack yet. I texted you last night, and I said, the only thing that can slow Joe Burrow down and hurt his passing numbers is a dominant run game by yeah. LSU. It was, it was That's definitely it. that. That's it. Joe's, Joe's Heisman numbers got hurt last night because we ran the football down the throat. Yeah. And we gassed them for 40, 50 yards a touch. I, and I, I feel like Florida Maybe not. was. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> well, it, so it's not no, that not much yet. of an exaggeration. Uh, they had 24 rushing attempts. LSU did for 9.1 yards per carry. Look for the game. LSU had 46 plays on offense. Yes, sir. They went for over 10 yards per play. Hey, hey, that point per yard or yards per point. Oh, we're, it's we're almost at one to one. At one point in time, when they scored 35. It was 34 plays for 35 points. Yeah. More points than plays. Yeah. It was uh, It was pretty ridiculous. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah. This was a fun game to watch. It, it really was. I was glad it was a fun game. And I could, I'm going to tell you, I, people just crapped all over the defense. I was stressed out. I was frustrated with the first half. Nervous. Second half, this is, what, this is why Dave Aranda makes more money than any defensive coordinator in the world. Okay. LSU has been down all year on defensive line. So we talked about the two best rushers from, from Florida were out. LSU's got several down defensive linemen out. And 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 we, we're starting a guy that just turned 18 a couple of weeks ago, okay, at, at cornerback. He started all year, by the way. This dude is is this much older than 17, has to be the youngest starter in all of college. You talking about Stingley? Yeah. Yes, can't, oh, yeah. can't imagine anybody else being that young. He, he was on. what was he the number two overall recruit last year? I yeah. mean, he, no, he's super talented, yeah, which is why he's, he's starting over dudes that are like four years older than him, not a little older than him, a lot older than him. Oh, he's um, ridiculous. Got picked on, made a huge play to redeem himself. But the, what I was going to say is, the first half they gave up twenty one points, and that's bad. And they looked like they couldn't stop anybody. Second half, seven points. Gave a lot of yards on a couple of drives, 
but came away with the turnovers, which is what LSU football is. Yep. And got got two red up, zone stops. Yeah. Gave up two and then two three and outs. That's it. You get two three and outs where they're backed up and they're punting the ball. You get great field position. And then they make good long drives, but get red zone stops. But that is that is massive. And 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 I'm gonna tell you, it, it is exactly what I don't I don't worry about the defense. I sold you this in the Texas game as well. Because they're not the same. They're not going to hold people to nothing anymore. Okay, yeah. that that day in, in, is over. But I don't. I, I just feel like they can make the stop when they need to make the stop. In the first half, you don't have to. You're going tit for tat, and it doesn't matter. Second half, they go in. They score. The, Florida scores the opening drive, and and then you say, okay, we got to shut this down. And they shut it down the rest of the outside of the opening drive of the second half. Florida didn't score again. That's a big deal. Let, let me tell you the two biggest stats. Well, the one biggest stat that mattered out of every What does Florida lead the world in going into that game? That's a they, I have no idea. They lead all of college football in sacks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They came up with zero last night, baby. I, I didn't know which one you they they were fifth in sacks in, in college football, See, but they were I, that that shocks me because in one game they had ten. So I'm yeah. not sure how, unless somebody else has played an extra game over them. I, I don't know how they get 10 sacks in one game, and, and anybody else can be close to them. No, they, they did lead in interceptions. Um, well, well, they got none of those They got also. none of those either. <laughs> against, I'm going to tell you this. Against that defense, I was worried, okay, this is the first time this offense is really going to play somebody that's going to hit them in the mouth. That's going to be, I believe, that's the best defense they're going to play all year. Because I believe that's one of the best defenses in all of the country. Oh yeah, we put up almost over. We put up over 500 yards of offense and 42 points. I didn't think we were going to come close to that. Yeah. I thought this was going to look like old school LSU Florida football, lower scoring. Both teams are going to be conservative on offense and 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 bring it back to what we know because this isn't you know Utah State right and. And it and it, it wasn't. We took the reins off. Dan Mullins took the training wheels off the of Trask, and and everybody was full bore. And if it people was can call so Trask the backup quarterback all they want, man, he's better than Felipe Franks. He should have been starting the entire year. Their record wouldn't be any different, but he would be a different quarterback if he had all those reps at the beginning of the season than as to now. I, I'll tell you this: Emory Jones was a lot of fun to watch when he came in as well. Like oh, it, no, totally agree. The yeah, way no, he's, Mullen, a, he's a good chains possession guy. Mullen's a hell of a football coach, yes, man. Yes, he is. Oh, he's just ridiculous, man. He's uh, Dan Mullen is something else. Uh, they, by the way, uh, their team total, uh, Mullen's, uh, Mullen's offense has hit over the team total by an average of seven points every single time that they've played Dave Aranda's defense. Every single time. It's, yeah. it's pretty remarkable because like, that, that don't happen often. Uh, but they did it again last night. Team total was twenty and a half for Florida, uh, and they they blew pla- like blew past that just absolutely, um, and still didn't even get close. Like <laughs> it was it was a close game, but that's still fourteen well, points un- until the second half. I mean, yeah. as soon as they got the three and out, they scored. LSU scored, and as soon as they got the three and out, I felt like that's, that's all game. we needed. We needed one stop to win the game. I didn't think. I didn't know that we'd beat them by two touchdowns at that rate, but I just knew we were going to score on every drive. I yeah. just I just felt that. No, and I'm, even the I'm time that we punted, I felt like we had already stopped them two times in a row. So this one punt doesn't matter. We're up an extra score. It all works out. It it most certainly does. Let's let's move on from there. Let's talk about topic number three: Red River, Oklahoma thirty four, Texas twenty seven. Story of this game: Sam Ellinger. Ran the ball 23 times for negative nine yards. Now, that includes sacks. But his longest run of the day was 11 yards. Oklahoma kept him in check. Jalen Hurts, 16 out of 28 passing, 235 yards with three touchdowns and a pick. It's only a 76 QBR, which isn't awful, but it ain't it ain't great by any stretch of the imagination. He had 17 carries for 131 yards and one touchdown. His stats, uh, of course, will continue to look ridiculous. Um this was this was a lot of fun. Oklahoma, it felt like multiple times they should have run away with this ball game. And they could never do it. Yeah, they and, couldn't find a way to pull away. And credit to, you know, Sam Ellinger and that bunch for for 
keeping them in that ball game and finding ways to score when it looked like there was no chance. But Oklahoma, it felt like dominated this game and only won by seven points. Like, it, it, does that? Did I have a different feeling than you did on that? No, no, I thought the same thing. I thought that they controlled it completely. Um, I, I did find it strange how low scoring this game was. I, I thought Oklahoma's yeah. defense played far better than I thought they were going to. And Texas's defense, while Oklahoma still put up a ton of points and, and a ton of yardage and stuff, they they made plays and they made stops. Here's what's weird, man. Is this a system or is this Jalen's just got one freak receiver that he can hit? Because all of Oklahoma's points came from two people, Jalen and, and uh, – CeeDee Lamb. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, that's it. Yeah, CeeDee Lamb, and, 10 receptions, 171 yards, three touchdowns. Yeah, that, that's where all their points came from. And and here's the thing. Those weren't I, – I always wish we could grade quarterbacks differently for, like, yards after catch and things like that because a lot of those were – he just hit him wide open in, in, in a flat, and then Lamb made three or four people miss. Oh, yeah. And, and scored. And I'm thinking, you know, that how much of this is the receiver and not the quarterback? Uh. No, I love I'd Jaylen. say this Oklahoma's him, skill you know, position. Yeah, Oklahoma's skill position guys are ridiculous. Like they, they just, they absolutely are. But Texas was able to shut everybody else down. Yeah. So, I, I, CD Lamb is a different level, though. Like he, no, I, he I completely agree with that. I'm not, like, I'm not knocking him. This is not a knock on him, and it's not really a knock on Jalen. I'm just trying to figure out if you go into it with a defensive mindset of we're going to shut Lamb down. Can you? Can you thwart this Oklahoma offense? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, look, so uh, uh, Kennedy Brooks had 10 rushes for 105 yards. Uh, the Stevenson kid, six carries, 37 yards. Uh, you know, as far as, yeah, there, nobody else had more than three receptions for Oklahoma. So Jalen Hurts had 17 carries, and he threw the ball 28 times. Like, it is, it is the Jalen Hurts show at Oklahoma. Like, that's just, that's all that is. But... Yeah, I I think I think there are ways for teams to beat Oklahoma. The only team, well, I think Baylor has the best opportunity to beat Oklahoma this year. No, no, that was exactly what I was thinking when I was saying, can they shut Lamb down and and everybody else not kill them? That's that's the team I was thinking about because that's a defense that is they're going to play different than Big Twelve football. They're yeah. not playing Big Twelve football. You come and in there. I, before the season, I would have said Iowa State. And really, like, through most of the first half of the season, I would have said Iowa State. I, it, Man, just when I watch Iowa State, I just don't think. I don't They're think, not the same team that they were even last year. Yeah. Like, this there, team there's has something stepped, weird. They, they've taken some steps back to where the eye test tells you something's different. Yeah. It's it's definitely. And Baylor, oh, my God. I know we're going to get there. But they, they've taken such a just – a massively the steps, the steps that they've taken since Matt Rule has taken over that program and where they were, the cesspool that they were is just indescribable, Gary. Oh, it really is. It really is. Let's uh, here. Let's go ahead and move into Penn State really quickly, because um, I don't think we're going to talk forever about that. But let's move into it. Uh, Penn State seventeen, Iowa twelve. It was night game at Kinnick. This was a lot of fun to watch. I had this on the other screen. Um, Iowa, 286 passing yards. You know, it, they did throw an interception, which obviously hurt them. Uh, only 70 rushing yards. They ran the ball 30 times for 2.3 yards per rush. Penn State's defense was absolutely legit. Penn State's offense, look, they only threw the ball 24 times. And they were 12 out of 24 for 117 yards. That's less than five yards uh, uh, per pass. Rushing 177 yards on 53 carries, that's 3.3. This was a defensive struggle. Penn State had eight penalties for 80 yards. Iowa, one penalty for five yards. It looked like Iowa did everything right, but they had two turnovers that were incredibly costly. And when it came down to it, it was it was Penn State on top at the end, like it has been for the past however many times that these two teams have played. Uh, Iowa just cannot seem to get over the Penn State hurdle Box score wise, Sean Clifford, you know, 16 carries, 52 yards, 12 out of 24, 117 yards. Wasn't anything great. That Penn State defense did what they needed to do to get the win. And it, it was almost, 
it was almost a look ahead spot because they've got Michigan coming in next week. But I don't know why you would look ahead to Michigan because I think Iowa is just as good as Michigan. Yeah, I do too. Um, I'm I'm gonna tell you what I think. I think Penn State had the game plan of this has got to be a field position game. I, I I watched none of this game except for when LSU went to halftime. But I, I was following <laughs> on my phone and I was texting you guys and I was like, I don't know if my phone's just not updating or whatever. Every time I check, every time I check, I always got the ball in their own four, their own six, their own nine. It within their own ten yard line. Iowa had the ball. I was like, okay, I always got the ball. They can score. They can go on a drive. And every time I check, they never left their own like ten to fifteen yard line. Let's and see. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Let's uh here. Let let's just look through some of the the. Play, it was a field like position game by Penn State, and they oh, yeah. just waited for Iowa to make a mistake. Iowa made one unbelievable play that was great score touchdown but they also made the interception that that cost them the extra score in the game yeah they they missed a field goal in the game they uh they fumbled which led to another field goal they threw an interception which led to a touchdown uh they didn't score a touchdown until um let's see 231 left in the ball game so you know, there's, hey, but that Iowa defense, defense played really well. Penn oh, State's yeah, a good football, football team offensively, offensively, and they held them to nothing. Yes, I mean, they, they, they had to scratch and claw for every point they got, and and this defense has a lot of pride in who they are and what they do, and, uh, and they played great. They and played it, great. It, that, that doesn't need to go unsaid. It sets up a, a great uh, whiteout atmosphere, you know, Absolutely. in Happy Valley next week. I, I kind of wish game day was going to Temple SMU, but – I totally understand why you would go to Michigan Penn State. That that makes all the sense in the world. Uh, next up, let's go ahead and talk about this. Baylor 33, Texas Tech 30 in double overtime. And, man, like as soon as Alabama A&M was over, because I had been keeping up with it on my phone, you know, because YouTube TV, wonderful experience <laughs> because I can watch it on my phone while I'm watching the other game. Uh, and I was over at my, my dad's house watching the Bama game, doing, you know, normal family, whatever. And I'm watching that game, and as soon as Alabama was done, I flipped it over. And my dad, who hates Big 12 football, was so riveted by this game. <laughs> this was... And, Baylor and, doesn't play Big 12 football. They no. bring you down to the mud. They bring you down to the, to the depths of the, of the earth. And, and, and their they line ugly play. it up. Their line play is so awesome. It's yes. What, what Matt Rule does, and this is, again, very broad brush. He recruits two- and three-star linemen and coaches yes. them up and makes them dirty, nasty, just incredibly physical players. Very tough. And then he's got his four-star skill guys, right? And then you get a, a quarterback that you can trust and – you go from there, and it builds fantastic football teams. And at no point, even when they were down late in this ball game, when all of this stuff was going on, you never felt like they were out of this game. You you always it, there was just this thought in the back of your head, like Baylor's going to win this game. Like yeah. there's there's no point at which I felt like Texas Tech was going to win. And credit to Matt Wells and that bunch for actually staying in it and giving themselves numerous opportunities to win but this it it had Baylor written all over it and now of course they get to go to Oklahoma State next week because it, this is just a gauntlet that they've been going through yes. but but man they are 6-0 right now and they look legit they look I, absolutely legit I love this team I don't know what Matt Rule is worth right now but but if you're a big boy program I'm talking a program one of the blue bloods of college football and you are in dumpster fire situation. Looking at you, Tennessee, got a big win yesterday. That's okay. But I'm talking about USC, Tennessee, the biggest programs in the country that are struggling to find winners. Or Michigan, Harbaugh walks away. This guy is a surefire home run. He will yes. never, ever, you're never going to go four and, 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 and you know, eight. It just won't happen. He's going to bring. Oh, no, you will early. You will, well, yeah, you will because he's taking over a trash fire. But I'm talking yeah. about he, he's going to make your team tough. 
He's going to take the softest team you could ever imagine and make them one of the toughest teams in the country. I don't know how he does it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what he does. But at Temple is it, still tough right now he, because yeah, of what he, he built developed in. a culture. He laid a foundation of a culture. Yeah. That it takes a long time to break that culture when you run these fast, um, all skill, all flash offenses. If that all falls apart, they, it takes years to rebuild. But if you have four, you know, recruiting classes of nothing but just tough, hard-nosed SOBs, a head coach can leave and somebody else can come in and that locker room is still full of yeah. leaders and tough-minded individuals and you don't go to nothing. You don't crumble to the to, to nothing. I'm, I'm telling you, I would – I think this guy is worth more money than any coach out there because of what we've seen him do. He takes programs that are in complete disarray and says, don't worry, guys, I can fix this. I can build this. Yeah, can he like, ever get a time. program to that next like, level? I don't know that he needs that much time. Hell, he took over Baylor, and they were the complete abyss. He had well, they, one losing season. Well, they and they, they went 1-11. In his yes. first season, they went yes. seven and six last year after going six and six say, regular season. We're talking and now six. We're and year up. three. We're year three. We're year three, and this is what he looks like. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just telling you. There's no, and not that I, I know Baylor people are going to come at me and say, "Hey, you try to take our coach and, and whatever," and they got a lot of money too. I'm just saying, if if I was, I, I would make him tell me no. If yeah. my program was in disarray, and I'm not saying. Oh, well, Saban and Harbaugh make ten million dollars, so I can't pay you more than them. Bullshit. Why not? Why the <laughs> hell not? No. Will eleven get you? Will twelve get you? I'm just gonna. St I'm gonna start. At, I'm gonna start at seven million dollars, and I'm gonna keep naming numbers until you say no. Yeah. I don't yeah. leave until you get on the plane. And if we're paying you twenty five million dollars a year, what do you think it's worth to Tennessee football right now if they could be this Baylor team, hard nosed, dominant, tough? Starting the season out six and zero, that's worth every nickel compared to where they've been over the last two decades. Yeah, they, they so them winning under Art Bryles was fun, exciting, whatever. Um, forget all the off field stuff. Again, yes. Not that yes. you can forget it, but just it, toss that to the side for now. You still knew that when they went up against a a really tough team. You had to bank on the other team, like you That's just right. you always knew it, right? And they got some in there, like they got a win over Oklahoma here and there. They got you know the but it was still Big Twelve board. football. They beat other Big Twelve teams, yeah. But they couldn't beat somebody who would ugly it up. And and with with Matt Rule, like he's got the skill guys to be able to go toe for toe and, and score, and he's also got the the big hogs in the middle to be able to dirty this thing up. And it is I so love, much fun. I love this man. I love this man. I love the style of football he coaches and, and the way he builds programs. It's, there are some people that are builders. He might not ever be able to be the guy to take them to a national title, get them to a playoff. But there are some people that are builders. And at some point in time, you got to build before you can get to that next level. And I think he can do it. Yeah. Now, this, well, I know this he can is do his that. slate. So he, they, they beat Iowa State at home. They go on the road. They beat Kansas State. They win at home against Texas Tech in double overtime. Now, next week, at Oklahoma State, then West Virginia comes in, who isn't a slouch by any means. And then they, uh, they've they got TCU on the road. Then they've got Oklahoma coming in. And then they've got Texas coming in right after that. And then they go to Kansas at the end of the year. So it is... Texas and OU at home back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, right after going to TCU. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just – that's that's rough stuff. No, but, but that's, that's okay. okay. That's, that's okay. okay. He doesn't have to go undefeated. We're not talking about trying to win the playoff. But we are talking about trying to be the other half of, of whatever team is playing in the Big 12 championship game. No, you're, you're right about that. I mean, that is – whew, that, that's crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, let's move on. Let's see, at 34-30 here, Arizona State 38, Washington State 34. And I'll, I'll just go on and toss this out that Utah beat Oregon State 52-7 to because this sets up a massive, massive game in the Pac-12 South between Arizona State and Utah next week. Where's that Arizona, game at? I believe it is in uh, Arizona State, if I'm not mistaken. But let me I was hope, I'm hoping that's a home game for her. Nope, nope, it is actually... 
At Utah? It's actually at Utah. That's, That's going to be tough. tough. It's going to be tough. Oh, it's going to be tough either way. That matter where it's played, it's going to be tough. And it's only being shown on the Pac-12 network. God. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to keep calling them out. I'm just going to keep calling them out. Yeah. It, it's pretty ridiculous. Pac-12 and the ACC, it's amazing. You got these really good football games. It'd be nice to showcase your product to the world for everybody to be able to see. It'd be, it'd be really good to be able to have that kind of exposure. No, no, we don't want our game to be seen by anybody. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. Heaven forbid I, we, we mark, marquee our, our, our talent. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I just, it's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. Arizona State uh, gets the win last minute. Uh, this was back and forth, man. And and Washington State did just about everything that they could. Their defense is pretty bad. Um, yeah. Arizona State had 532 total yards of offense. Like, I, I don't think they've reached that all year. E- no. Even against Sacramento State. Like, yeah, they I, didn't say that. That, I think that was a season high. Um, 10.1 yards per pass. They had 5.3 yards per run. Uh, Washington State, I mean, obviously they were able to put up yards, 498 total yards for them, 466 of it through the air. And, I mean, the the kid, Gordon, their quarterback, 44 out of 64 for 466 yards and three touchdowns with no picks. They they ran the ball a total of 10 times. And uh, uh, Borgie, I think was his name, Nine carries, 31 yards, one touchdown. They just threw the ball all over the field. And they were able to put up points. When it came down to it, that defense could not get a stop. Jaden Daniels is absolutely, he's legit. He's absolutely legit. Like, this kid, Herm Edwards, with the defense that he can build, with a a stud quarterback. And then, of course, they've got Benjamin, the running back. You know Benjamin who is yep. fantastic. Uh, I, man, I'm telling you, like this this team could absolutely beat Utah next week on the road and and get to the Pac-12 championship. I was just about to say, they're in control at that point in time. The winner of that game is firmly, firmly in control of the Pac-12 South. Well, check, check this out. So if they win against Utah, they've got at UCLA, and then USC comes in, and then they've got at Oregon State, before Oregon comes down to Tempe. Hang on. I shouldn't say that. Has Arizona... Okay, Arizona, Arizona got beat by Washington, Washington last night. Yeah, yeah. I would say that, but that's their only Pac-12 loss, though. Uh, what, Arizona State? No, Arizona, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's their only one. So, so they've only got one Pac-12 loss. Yeah, but, I mean, it's still Arizona. Like, they haven't exactly... Look, no, I'm they... just saying, but they're still in... They haven't lost a league game. We're talking about trying to win the South. We're not trying to talk about the playoffs. Hey, no, you're right. You're right. Okay. You so, haven't lost a conference game, then you're doing pretty damn good. I mean, Northwestern won their division last year because they didn't lose a conference game except for to Michigan. Ar- Arizona State lost at home to Colorado, and Arizona lost at home to Washington. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and of course, both have to play Utah, who and, and lost U- to and USC. Utah, and Utah lost to USC. It so. is the, the cannibalization of the Pac-12. Is, is yeah. what this is, because they're all beating each other. Uh, Colorado beats Arizona State, but then goes and loses at Oregon, what is it, 45-3 to three on yep. Friday night? Just, just got smoked? Yes. Uh, the Pac-12 is fun. Uh, not not great, but fun. And That's right. I'm okay with that. Isn't that what we want the, uh, the college football world to be? Is at least entertaining? I think so. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move into another conference. That is a lot of fun, at least to me and you. The AAC. Temple 30, Memphis 28. Did you see oh, the catch that everybody's talking about? Chicanery. Absolutely. Um, Listen, I, I love I love Temple. And I thought Temple was absolutely a live dog in this game. This is not, excuse me, this is not a Memphis Homer stuff. That is that is complete horse crap. Yeah. That'll call it a catch. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, as far as total yards, Memphis 491, Temple 456. Neither defense really showed up in this game other than Temple created four turnovers. That's it. Um, man, I jumped on Twitter after I think the the second or third turnover that, that Brady White had. And 
you know, I, I wanted to see, because this happens every week in Memphis, where Brady White does something wrong, and people jump this kid like it ain't nothing. Like, he, I, I don't know what it is but, about but he, him. But hang on, you said it. It's because every week he's doing stuff wrong. Oh, yeah. That's oh, the no, reason I'm, why. I'm not trying to defend him. It's just I haven't seen Memphis football fans go after one of their own nearly as hard as they go after this kid. I'm and, just tired of seeing him make the same mistakes over and over and over again. At some point in time, if you're making different mistakes, you're trying different things. That's yeah. one thing. We're still winning the game, so it's good, right? Yeah. But, but – this is a game where you can't make those mistakes, and you're making the same damn mistakes you made in week one, week two, week three, week four. We're week seven. What are we doing? Had three fumbles lost, one interception thrown, uh, but they were able to put up you know, yardage like it's going out of style, and whenever they didn't turn the football over, they were able to get into the end zone pretty much every time. Yeah. And, you know, it came down to, what was it, a minute 30 left, and – a fourth and nine play where Joey Magnifico, the tight end, catches the it, it looks like he caught the pass. And every he caught the pass. Every angle that I saw looked like he caught the pass. The player swore he caught it. It never well, hit you, the ground. You see the ball. You they, see I mean you there's it, not an angle where you don't see it. They called it a catch on the field. <clears throat> and they overturned it. And then they go back and reverse it. And of course, like it there are national people that say that the AAC has a a ref problem. Yeah. Like and and I don't know how much I agreed with them beforehand, but man, that was that was some absolute uh, crazy. I think stuff. every I just I think, think officiating is bad. I mean, nobody's no. If they if they had a ref problem, the AAC would be trying to get Memphis to go undefeated. Yeah. Well, they're I mean, not I, they're I, not helping I, Tim because I mean, Tim they, already they has be, a loss. They could be helping SMU. Nah, it doesn't matter. Like, that's not helping SMU. No, they, they'd be they'd be pushing for Memphis because there was talk for yeah. November second that college I'm game day. You want Memphis SMU to be undefeated together? Yeah. Like, and that's, that's what you want. There was talk about college game day coming to Memphis. And granted, if Memphis goes on and wins, because Memphis has Tulane coming in next week. So yeah. if you if you get Memphis to win out and you get SMU to win out up until November second. You can still have two top twenty-five teams with College Game Day coming into the Liberty Bowl. I just have no idea what they had to overturn it. That's that's all. That's they com- complete complete bullshit. I wish we could have seen a uh, a different angle. Like if there was an angle that they saw, that no, I think we have all the stuff they see, Gary. That, I mean, maybe I don't. So. I don't think that there's an angle that we get that they don't as fans. Then that's, then there's no way. That I could I, see I that know. being overturned. I agree. <laughs> why, I mean, it was crazy. It's called scannery. It's bullshit. Yeah. Now you're it's you're right. Is. You're right. Uh, let's uh, let's move on. Let's see. Uh, Clemson. Look, they just they they curb stomped Florida State. Curb stomped forty five to fourteen. This game was never in doubt. No, um, this and is then the most predictable thing of all. Oh yeah. They almost get beat by UNC. They they get a bye week and, and they get to they listen get to everybody talk team. trash. Yeah, they get this high school team to come in here that wears a big name on their chest. Their daddy was something special. Their granddaddy was something special. But these kids ain't nothing special. And they and they beat the hell out of them. And they say, "Look at us, we're back. We've got this thing fixed." Yeah, I mean, this was utter domination from from the word go. <laughs> utter domination from the word go. Uh, Five hundred fifty-two total yards to two fifty-three. Uh, 232 passing yards to 150, 320 rushing yards. Like, this is what Clemson got fixed, is they ran the po- uh, the football 53 times for an average of six yards a carry. Uh, Florida State had four turnovers. Clemson held the ball for 40 minutes to 20 minutes. Like, it was just total domination. And I'm going to pair these two together because everybody talks about them together. Alabama, you know, they, they beat up on Texas A&M 47 to 28 at they covered the spread, which of course was bad for for our prediction earlier in the week, but uh, but yeah, it's the same thing. Alabama has now scored over forty five points in five straight games. They just do this every week, and it's the same thing with Clemson, right? And and I don't know how good either one of them is, and we really won't know how good Alabama is until November 9th when LSU comes to town. That's right. 
And so in Clemson, we're not going to know how good they are until until the playoff. You know, I I, I think it's a, where a couple of weeks ago it was not a foregone conclusion that they were actually going to make the playoff because of just how pedestrian they had looked throughout the first you know five games of the season. At this point, if if they come out and do this, you know, pretty much every week, yeah, it's going to be it, Clemson will be in the playoff. There's nobody that can stop them. The ACC is a disaster. No, nobody's going to stop them, but I'm telling you, we have to stop and we have to look at how we figure the playoff out, okay? And there has to be some type of consistency, Gary. They're not going to play a top 25 team the entire year, okay? When oh, yeah. their schedule is done, zero to – and is that their fault? No. But we didn't let UCF in because they had the same argument. Well, it's not our fault that our conference is bad. Okay. Yep. And we said, no, we're sorry. That's not an acceptable argument. There are too many qualifying teams that belong here. That you do play quality schedules. Table. If Wisconsin has one loss and it's to Ohio State, or Ohio State has one loss and it's to Wisconsin, or they go one and one against one another in the play and the whatever it is, and and that's the situation. Well, I guess that would have to be the situation for both of them. Then I can't tell you that both of those teams don't belong. If LSU or Alabama's only loss is to one another. Okay. Yeah. And Oklahoma goes undefeated. That's that's five teams that have a far superior resume, and nobody can argue against that. Yeah, Their I resume agree. is far superior than Clemson's resume. But Clemson is the winner from last year, and they've been there four or five years in a row. So we just think, well, they just deserve it because they've done all these things in the past. And we have to stop looking at last year and the year before and the year before. The only thing we need to look previously on is what were the qualifications so we can carry the qualifications over and be consistent about who we let in and who we don't. But their strength of schedule, the only argument against UCF was their strength of schedule. That's it. That's the list because they won all their games. Had had Clemson, Alabama come down to like a last-second touchdown, last-second field goal, whatever, and Alabama won last Mm -hmm. year, would... Would Clemson still get the benefit of the doubt the way that I feel like they're going to as far as politics are concerned? Like, say that they didn't win the national championship. Because college football only cares about who your granddaddy was, who you are the last couple of years. Even even if they're not a historic program, all the Clemson fans, we hadn't been this for for the last couple of years. It doesn't matter. But you've been it for the last couple of years, okay? And so college football now has it in their mind that this team is supposed to get in. And so we have to justify it that way. And that's just not true. I just gave you, if that happens, and those five teams do exactly what I said they do, Alabama, LSU, go undefeated except for one of them loses to one of them, and Oklahoma, Ohio State and, and Wisconsin only lose to one another, and they finish one and one, and Oklahoma goes undefeated, there is no somebody in that five is getting left out, all right? That that means Clemson, I don't even consider them in the discussion. There's no way I can leave two of those teams out. There's just no way you can do it. Let's see. Because the... look at who those teams had to play to get the record they got. Here is let, – let's go through just very quickly because I, I, I didn't plan on getting into this. Uh, these are the members of the CFP selection committee, okay? You've got Rob Mullins from the University of Oregon – You've got Gary Barta from the University of Iowa. Frank Beamer, former head coach of Virginia Tech. Uh, Paola uh, Boivin. She's the uh, she's a professor at Arizona State. Joe Castiglione from Oklahoma. Ken Hatfield, former head coach. Uh, I mean, he was at Rice. He was at Clemson. He was at all sorts of places. Uh, Ken Hatfield was, uh, was buddies with uh, Barney. It was over at Ole Miss. You remember Bruce Lloyd and that bunch? I I got you. Um, Let's see. Chris Howard, president of Robert Morris University. Ronnie Lott, uh, former All-American at USC. Uh, Terry Mohair from Arkansas State. He's the the AD there. Uh, Ray Odierno, former chief of staff, U.S. Army. R.C. Slocum from Texas A&M. Let's see. Todd Stansberry, Georgia Tech AD. And Scott Strickland, AD at Florida. So, I mean, there's... Eh. 
I mean, I, I don't see anything that would be too crazy that could lead you one way or another. Um, Hatfield being a former head coach at Clemson could be something. But he's going to have to recuse himself. himself. Would he? I mean, he doesn't work for Clemson now. It doesn't matter, I don't think. I think, I think if, if you, you have previous ties to the school, you have to recuse yourself. I mean, Last so. year when the playoff committee came up, I think like five people had to recuse themselves of the group. Which is just crazy. Like, it shouldn't shouldn't we... We have a committee made of people that are actively involved and connected to all these things? Yeah, that's insane. That, that would make sense. That's insane. All we needed to fix the BCS was continue with the BCS. <coughs> Excuse me. And then just add two more teams. That's it. Like, like you didn't have to blow the whole system up. You didn't have to set it all on fire. You had to burn it to the ground. You just say... This, this system is really good at coming up with two best teams, but we don't like when the two best teams are in the same conference. So what we got to do is we got to add more teams and yeah. let the same system continue to pick it. Because then you get politics out of it. But see, college football doesn't want that. They want the politics. Yeah. They want the argument. They, they, they openly talk about how we would we like the fight. It, it, that's what we care about. So we don't care about having a real champion or a good champion or the correct, correct champion. We want the fight. We want the argument. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. We've got uh, three more, and then uh, have you got your top ten ready for today? Yep, ready to go. All right, so number nine here uh, in our starting 11. Da, da, da. Wisconsin 38, Michigan State 0. And Boom. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me. I wrote this down over here. Let's see. Wisconsin has now outscored their opposition this year 255 to 29. They have four shutouts. They have destroyed both Michigan teams. Absolutely demolished both of them. Um, Wisconsin looks as good as any team in the country. Now, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the offenses that they have played are abysmal. Just ridiculous. Michigan State had 149 total yards of offense. They had 30 rushing yards. Uh I mean, Wisconsin dominated every aspect of this football game. And I cannot wait to see them play against Ohio State in two weeks. In Camp Randall? No. That's at the horse. Is that the shoe? That is at the shoe. I thought the entire year that was at Camp Randall. Nope. It is at the shoe. That's going to be brutal. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough. Um, And now, to be fair, they've got Illinois the week before. Now, it's on the road, but yeah. is what it is. Uh, Ohio State has t- 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 Northwestern the week before yeah. that, so, uh, which we will be at this, uh, this Friday. It's going to be a good time. I cannot wait for that. So, But, yeah, Wisconsin, I, I don't know what else there is to say about this. They're the most complete team in college football, right? Like, like we, we believe, believe that? that. Uh, offense I, think, I think Ohio State is probably the most complete team. I think Wisconsin has been the most dominant. Like, they can do exactly what they want to do, but they, like, as far as throwing the football, all that kind well, of Yesterday, that's all they did was throw the football. Oh, yesterday, they were 18 out of 21 for only 180 yards passing. Like, they... They ran well, the ball. Their defense took the ball away over and over and over again. Well, yeah, but they ran the ball 46 only, if times. If I only have to go 25 yards to score a touchdown, you can't fault the offense for that. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying, like, I, as far as explosive plays, as far as all that, like, that's not Wisconsin's wheelhouse. Like, Ohio State can do all of that. So I still think Ohio State is a They have done better. all of that against defenses that nobody thinks are good, right? But for Ohio State? Have they played any good defenses? I mean, Ohio State played Cincinnati and Michigan State, which we okay. we thought Michigan State was. <laughs> we thought Michigan State's defense was good, yeah. and and we think Cincinnati's defense is okay. But I mean, other than that, they gave up they no. gave up like thirty eight points to Houston. But Cincinnati, yes. I mean, they gave up twenty three to Houston. Like they I beat them thirty eight to twenty three. So, <laughs> I thought that was higher scoring. Um. But no, like Cincinnati, like, I mean, we were just talking last week about Cincinnati, you know, upsetting UCF because of their defensive line play and everything else. They were able to get pressure on the quarterback, and they were able to do none of that against Ohio State. So, no, I, look, we'll see in a couple of weeks <coughs> exactly what the uh, what the deal is here. But, you know, I, 
I'm I'm interested to see it. How's that? Because I don't think that either of them have been fully tested yet, and I think both of them will be a great test for each other. The fact that Wisconsin has beat Michigan State and Michigan, and we're saying they haven't been tested. Like, That's insane. I don't know what to do with that. I don't either. But I, did, Michigan's did, defense is good. We can definitively say their defense is good. Are they one of the best defenses in the country? No, but they're really good defense. Are you going to tell me that Florida's defense is not good? I, no, I'm not saying that. Okay. All right. They're a really good defense. Michigan's defense is really good. I, how about this? And they I'm got talking blown about out by as, Wisconsin. I'm talking about being tested as far as being elite. Is that fair? But the, how many? We've had this conversation. Before, I know there's dude. only like how many eight elite teams defenses are, elite? are there? Like there's eight to ten teams that that could be considered elite. No, that's they're not. it. No, they're not. No, there's there's just not. That's you just this is wrong. How many would you we're put not, in there? There are not eight teams that are elite in college football right now, uh, and it, there damn sure aren't eight defenses that are elite in college. No, football no, you're right, right about that. No, you're right about that. Well, we were talking about defenses. So, and, and then elite teams, there's not like eight elite teams either. Okay. We'll, Penn we'll State talk about might it. win out, and Penn State might win, you know, the whole damn thing. And they might be great. Penn State's not, as of right now, they're not an elite team. All right. They're not in that conversation. You might okay? be right. Baylor, I love Baylor. Nobody worships Matt Rule like I do. I assure you of that. But they're not elite. Like they're, no. they're, not, they're not eight teams that are elite. That's okay. And I don't know that I would say Clemson is elite because they beat the hell out of Florida State. Congratulations. Hey, may, job, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. We'll, t- we'll talk about our top team. 10 here in a minute. But uh, let's go on and jump into the next part. The ACC is a complete mess. Yeah. I have no idea who the second best ACC team is right now. Uh, this was This weekend was just insane. I, I wrote down Louisville 62, Wake 59. And then on Friday, Miami 17, Virginia 9. But on top of that, um, I mean, Virginia Clemson Tech, really needed Virginia and Wake Forest to continue to win. Yeah. They need whoever's at the top, aside from them, to keep being at the top. And they need to be able to play them and get wins over big teams. It's, it's just mind-blowing to see, you know – Boston College has not been good. Virginia Tech has not been good. Miami has not been good. Syracuse, not Syracuse, good. Syracuse, not good at all. Not good. Uh, North Carolina, okay. Wake Forest, yeah, yeah, Wake Forest getting run, run by Louisville. Like, that was just – like, I, I'll say this. It was a fun ball game. I had it on one of my screens. We had but, a crap load of points. I mean, it, that that whole thing – here's here is how that thing went down. <laughs> Uh, 520 total yards for Louisville, 668 for Wake Forest. Louisville had two turnovers. Wake Forest had three. Yeah, I would say. And, and I think that was the difference. Win the turnover battle, win, win the, the game. game. Yeah. I mean, it just it, – Louisville. what Scott Satterfield is doing at Louisville is nothing short of miraculous. Exactly. I, didn't, I, I thought, thought it would take at least a year to, to, to get here. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think this would happen this year at all. No, I think uh, I think you're right. The ACC, I have no idea what to think. Uh, going I don't either. And, and I know Clemson people are going to call me a hater and all this other stuff. It's just a math problem, guys. This isn't a, a, an indictment against Clemson. It's just a math problem. Yeah, it'd be easier to put them in if there were eight teams. Deserve to be here. We got four spots to fill, and you think that you're owed one because you won it last year and you've been in it the last three years. And I just don't understand how that logic matters. The math problem that we've used for the last four or five years is if you don't play anybody, then you're the odd man out. And I'm sorry. We've let teams in with worse records than you because they played people and you didn't. And that's nothing you can control. You tried to play a big boy SEC team, and I thought you did. I thought A&M was going to be your saving grace this year. Yeah. So They're going to finish with five losses. They're not good. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just that's the way it is. Let's uh let's wrap up the starting eleven with uh, a a little a little jump back into SEC country. Derek Mason and Joe Moorhead may not be cut out for their gigs. Vanderbilt well, I've been got on one since the day it happened. So uh, oh I know uh, UNLV thirty four Vandy ten and that was in Nashville to get demolished by more than three touchdowns at home by this UNLV team. That ain't good. Uh, and on top of that, Mississippi State 
losing at Tennessee, 20 to 10. Now, in, in most years, not a big deal, right? However, this season, with as well, bad as Tennessee. The last couple of years, it, pretty, pretty embarrassing. embarrassing. Uh, agreed, agreed. But, man, uh, Tennessee, well, Mississippi State, of course, had uh, their players that were suspended. Like, they had them back. And all it, it, the offense did not show up. Moorhead is an offensive guy. He's got his quarterbacks in there right now. Right. He's got his players. And against that Tennessee defense, they put up 10 points. And I, there, I don't know how to explain this. Uh, all Tell me about what you think it would say if he were to leave to take the Rutgers job. I think, I think because that's been reported, right, that people are considering him as the guy that he's willing to leave on his own volition. Yeah. on his own willingness to take Rutgers over staying at Mississippi State and trying to build something, I think that's a damning indictment of where the Mississippi State football program is. See, and I'm going to disagree with you. And I knew that that was what you were going to say. What, what would be your logic behind how that's not? I would rather coach Rutgers than coach here. He is a Northeast guy. He oh. coached at Fordham. He coached at Penn State. He has only ever coached. In the Northeast. he All of his recruiting ties are in the Northeast. So I think it makes perfect sense for him to go back up job? there. Why did he take the damn job? I think that he thought that he was going to be able to come down here and show the SEC a thing or two. I think that's what he was doing. And, <laughs> and once he got here, he realized, oh, crap, I am in over my head. Like, I, I, I don't know how to beat, you know, a and M, Auburn, Tennessee, like it, the schedule. Tennessee. We're not talking about A and M. We're not talking about Auburn. We're talking about one of the worst runs Tennessee football has had in the history of Tennessee football. Yeah. Over a hundred years of playing football. Look, look, look. They went eight and five last year, and and With had the one of the two. most talented teams in Mississippi, maybe the most talented team. Well, at in least Mississippi on state history, at least on defense. I mean, they had the number two overall defense last year and lost five games. That offense, wait a minute now, that offense the year before with the different head coach was one of the best offenses in the country. It Nick was prolific, Fitzgerald yeah. was absolutely one of the best quarterbacks in all the SEC, and he went from one of the top three or four quarterbacks in the SEC to being DFL. Yeah. Well, it, it, not, and the only not thing that changed of, was his head coach. It's not because his ability changed. It's because what no. the head coach was asking him to do changed. Exactly right. Yeah. But that's on the head coach. That's on Moorhead. That's yeah. not on anybody else. It's not on Nick. Shame on him for what he did to Nick. That's an ab- that's, a, that's an absolute travesty for yeah. taking somebody who's been a Mississippi State legend and played his ass off for that school and sacrificed his body for that school to be – the end of his career, a laughing stock and a footnote and a, and a, oh, he couldn't get it done and a tarnishment of his reputation because you, the head coach, don't know how to use him. All you had You're to do an was offensive watch genius. No, you've got, a, you've got a trick. You've got a gimmick that you play on people. And if you have a certain way and a certain guy and a certain this and a certain that, then maybe the trick all comes together. But if one piece of that puzzle is not there, then the whole thing crumbles. Yeah, you're not a genius. That's not a genius. It's not an offensive system. Tell me you're this. You're a charlatan. Tell me this. If you were Moorhead, would you not try and jump ship and go to, to Rutgers if that job was open and they ask you? That's the best thing that could happen to Mississippi State. Well, I agreed, but if it, no. let's look at it and from no, Would, I, would I leave Mississippi State for, for Rutgers? Absolutely not. I'm going to make them no. pay me. I'm going to make them fire me. I'm going to make them pay me because – he is not fixing Rutgers, by the way. I don't, I don't think anybody is. And but. he's not going to get the contract that he's got at Mississippi State because they just got an extension because Mississippi State can – because the state laws, you can only have four-year deals. So every year he gets a new extension. He's always got that extra year. I don't think he I, got I that extension after last year. Yes, he I, did. I, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Okay. Yes, Maybe I'm did. wrong. He, I thought I remember – he's, he's sitting on a four-year deal right now, and the state of Mississippi only allows you to have four-year deals. So, yeah, so he gets an extension every year. He's, he is it's extension every year. I'm, I'm telling you. I don't you, know, man. I, I think, I'm telling you, I'd make him fire me because then I could just go get a $2 million OC job somewhere and and be just fine because I don't know what Rutgers is going to offer you. 
I mean, hey, you may have a point. The buyout at Mississippi State is going to be a hell of a lot more than the buyout at Rutgers. Also, you say that he's a Northeastern guy, but there's a reason that people from the Northeast that live their entire lives there, when they're able to retire, move down south. Okay, well, they moved to None Florida. of them stay there for hundreds of years their entire <laughs> life. Because it sucks. They're not retiring in Starkville, though. Come on. No, man. but it doesn't matter. They're still retiring to come down south because it sucks up there. Well, yeah, I mean, look, you, you I love make the city a of valid Boston. Point. We're a Boston hoodie, man. I love this city. There's a, there's a reason I don't own property there. You just go there for vacation. <laughs> Only in the summer, right? <laughs> Fall's beautiful. The fall the is fall beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Not in the wintertime, though. Not in the no. wintertime. Hell no. All right, let's move into our top ten. And do you want me to, to go first? Yep. And how are we going to do this this week? So I'll, you can, how, I don't care. All right. I'll go, uh, I'll go from 10 to 1. Okay. My top 10. I've got number 10, Notre Dame. Even though they didn't look fantastic last night, they, uh, they let USC stay in that game way longer than they should have. I still think they are a pretty good team. Uh, look, I'll go on and tell you, I dropped Georgia completely out of this thing for now. Me too. Um, number 9, I kept Florida in. I think it is really, really difficult to beat a really good Auburn team at home and then go on the road to LSU when LSU has been prepping for this. Uh, number eight, I've got Oregon. Yes, I've got Oregon in here with one loss. I've got Auburn out. I think Oregon, like, that game was a toss-up with Oregon and Auburn. So it was a, a, a pass that the wide receiver made a play on that had the defensive back made the play. Oregon wins the football game. So I've got Oregon here because I think they are a better team. Uh, Oklahoma, I've got at seven. Number six, I got Penn State. Number five, I've got Wisconsin. Number four, I've got Clemson. Uh, number three, Alabama. Number two, LSU. And number one, Ohio State. Who you rolling with? So my number eleven team, last man out is Oregon. I left them out. Okay. And I left them out to make room for the Baylor Bears, who absolutely deserve to be in the top ten. They okay. they they just do. After that, I got Florida. I'm with you. They they lost to a team that, that is absolutely deserving to lose to, but they've got some good wins on their schedule, and they're still a tough team. After that, I got Clemson. <clears throat> While they dominated Florida State, I don't know that that's anything special. Nope. Um, they're still here. I got Notre Dame still there, Oklahoma, Penn State, Alabama, and now we get to the top three. I have, and this is strictly off of what I've seen this year and the caliber of wins teams have. Ohio State, Wisconsin, LSU. That makes perfect sense. LSU has a win over a top 10 team and a top 15 team. Nobody else in the country has even played two teams in the top 15. Okay. Not yet. They won them both, and they won them both kind of decisively. All yeah. right. While the school was close in some of them and, and, and back and forth a little bit, they 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 rarely they trailed. were still up by two touchdowns with less than two minutes left against Texas, Both and, them, yes. and they won by two touchdowns against Florida. Yeah. yeah, and and Wisconsin has played a substantially tougher schedule than Ohio State, and they've dominated everybody. That's the only reason I have them over Ohio State is their schedule is marketably better than Ohio State's right now. That's all. They both killed everyone they played. But Ohio State hasn't played anybody as good as Michigan or Michigan State yet. I mean, Ohio State did demolish Michigan State. They didn't beat yeah, them the same okay. way Wisconsin did. Okay, so so they have the same common opponent. I'm, we're talking Nick and Pitts, Pick and Pitts. Is Michigan better than Cincinnati? And I think Michigan's better than Cincinnati. Yeah, no, I, okay. I'm with so, you. So that's it. That's okay, it. Yeah. We're, we're picking it. We're, 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 we're talking about the difference between one and two. Their resumes are virtually the same. They've killed everybody they played. So how do you separate them? Uh, that's that's a good point. That's how I separate so, them. And at, at week seven, it makes perfect sense. So uh, that's why everybody does it the way that they want to And do yes, it. Georgia is absolutely gone, and, and they cannot come back. People talk about how, oh, if they went out, they can still go in. Dude, I think a one loss, the, if they play Alabama or L LSU and they're undefeated and they lose in the SEC title game, I would take Alabama or LSU. This is, I promise this is not biases over Georgia's resume. I just would. I yeah. just would. I know, I know you won the championship game. Dude, you got your ass kicked by the third string quarterback for South Carolina. Yeah. A team in, that's in South Carolina's line, six losses. South Carolina's line dominated. 
Like they, South Carolina is struggling to be bowl eligible. Yeah. Bowl eligible. And at home, you got your ass kicked by the third best quarterback on that team. Yeah. It, That's a damning indictment. I'm sorry. You bounced. It absolutely is. You are 100% right. Um, all right, you and I will be going to see Ohio State this Friday against the Northwestern Wildcats. Come on. Mm. Hoping for a miracle. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it's a good ball game. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun time. We're going to be tailgating. We'll have, uh, we'll have a little podcast out with the guys, a, a video. I think you and I, and I hadn't talked to you about this, but uh, we, we're going to record some of the antics on the way up. We're going to drive it all the way up to Chicago. It's going to be fun. This is going to be a good trip. Um, WCE on the road. Maybe we get this thing sponsored. Maybe <laughs> we we shall see. Uh, until then, though, whoo, this is going to be a fun week to try and get some stuff figured out. Um, I mean, Tulane and Memphis coming up. Florida, South Carolina, Arizona State, Utah, uh, Iowa State, Texas Tech. We'll see what's up with that. Oregon, Washington, and then of course Michigan, Penn State. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun week. Of course, can't wait to get to it. Chris, anything else we need to hit on? Nope, let's go. Let's do it. Let's watch some NFL, buddy. All right, that's going to wrap up the college football recap for week number seven. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.